The lens that I use at least 80% of the time is a 70 to 200 f2.8 with image stabilization. In my opinion, this is the one lens every senior photographer must have. Here's a case where I started out at 70 millimeters to show the scene, which I thought would work, but that shot had no impact. I zoomed in and that's where the image suddenly gave me the look that I wanted. Zooms allow that instant creativity choice change. Some photographers like to say they zoom with their feet. Well, that's fine, but I can zoom faster than anyone could move their feet or move the tripod or change lenses. Referencing this to my earlier discussion of depth of field, note that the background is sharper on the cropped image than the zoomed in image. That's because the image size of her face on the focal plane was smaller in the unzoomed image than the zoomed one. I've used a 70 or 80 to 200 zoom on a 35 millimeter body for high school seniors since 1988, with film of course, and I think I was the first to do that. I attached a lens shade and a vignetter along with varying degrees of diffusion filters to reduce retouching since that wasn't possible on a 35 millimeter negative. I did that because at the time there were no zooms for existing um, medium format camera systems and I loved the versatility that zooms gave me. The ease of simply twisting the lens to get a tighter crop instead of having to move the camera or tripod back and forth sped up the sessions and made my life easier. Zooms help the creative process by allowing you to experiment for the right angles and framing and compositions. When you've got a zoom, you've always got the right focal length at your fingertips to catch spontaneous actions. We had to walk a mile to get to this spot, so having all the focal lengths between 70 and 200 was essential. I remember doing weddings with prime or single focal length lenses, and too often I missed shots because I didn't have the right lens with me. I'm often asked if I use a 70 to 200 indoors, and the answer is yes. It's the one I use most of the time, whether it's indoors or outdoors. A wide angle lens is great when you want to accentuate graphic lines, but even a 70 millimeter lens can do the job, as it did on all of these. When I see perspective lines, I immediately go as wide as that lens will allow. On the other end of the zoom's range, I automatically go to the long end when I'll be photographing the person full length, so the background will be enlarged enough to be not too busy, or if I need to narrow the field of view. When we're outside, we usually have enough space to choose the focal length we want to use. With zooms, I usually prefer the longer end of its focal length. Doing so minimizes what we see in the background, so the image is less busy. When photographing a three-quarter length or a full length with a busy background, I want it thrown out of focus as much as possible. The only way to do this is with a wide aperture lens such as this 135 f2. Anytime I see a busy background, I'll pull out a fast lens. Here at my normal setting of f4, the background is a little too busy. Shooting at f2 makes it soft enough to separate him from the background. However, we need to be careful with all shallow depth of field lenses. We can end up with a depth of field that's too shallow, especially on close-ups. At f2, her near eye is sharp, but the rest of her face is out of focus. That isn't a terrible thing, but it's a look that you have to be comfortable with. Now here's an example where the camera focused on her back eye. 
I'm not at all satisfied with this and I would delete the file because of it. The 200 f2 is an impressive lens and it ought to be for 6,000 bucks. While the 200 f2 is heavy, it has image stabilization and with sufficient light I had no problem hand holding it. This crop of the previous image shows that it's very sharp, at least on the front eye. I spotted this clump of flowery things, I don't know what they are, and figured it would look good out of focus. And I was right. The look that you get with a 200mm f2 lens is unmistakable. And one more view of what was behind her. Longer lenses narrow your field of view and you can use that feature to uh, avoid seeing things you don't want to see. A 300 millimeter lens has an 8 degree diagonal field of view on a full frame camera. So if you have a great expanse of a really neat background Fine, you can use a short telephoto. When this is your goal, to show her surrounded by a patch of dandelions. But the previous image wasn't done in that field. It was done in that tiny patch of dandelions in the background. The 300 millimeter lens allowed me to shoot in just a small area. Just showing the image again to show how the narrow field of view worked. We can use that narrow field of view when there are other objects nearby that would otherwise get in the way. This and the next two images were done without moving the cars. And all of that was done here. I know this looks pretty hopeless, but a long lens can work wonders. I was able to position the camera so that only the distant trees would be seen in the background. This is an overall view of the location where the next image was done. With a telephoto lens like the 300 f2.8, we isolate a very narrow field of view so you can find backgrounds anywhere. I like the somewhat fashion look that it gives. So if a background is busy, the compression of a 300 at f2.8 can come to the rescue. Here are two more examples of turning background trash into soft but desirable mush. That red post uh, blended very nicely with her sweater. Yes, I'm always aware of coordinating something in the background to the subject's clothes. In focus, that fence isn't all that nice. But when it's out of focus, it provides a really nice compositional balance. I discuss those kinds of compositional aspects in my composition program. This is nice, but I like the leaves in the background, the way I saw them with my eyes. To me, this looks a little bit too mushy. So stopping down gave me a better representation of what I envisioned. Again, my eyes saw something that the lens couldn't capture. I was using a 300 millimeter lens at f2.8. These bare branches in the foreground were part of the composition that I wanted. If I just stopped down to f16 or smaller, then the background would have been too sharp, which wasn't what I wanted.
so I had to combine the two exposures to get the foreground branches with the softness in the background. I liked using a long lens on a long road, but I often struggled with how much or how little depth of field to use. Eventually I decided I like a deep depth of field, but I did this one long ago before I decided that. But I did photograph the distance sharp in case I wanted to blend that into the previous image. So I did that here and I prefer it. Note, however, that there's a soft middle ground that doesn't make sense. It would have been better to shoot the image stopped way down, like f16. 